Suspense. Tonight, Eve, starring Nancy Kelly. Right over there, Miss Jeremy, second booth. Thank you. You got five minutes. Hello, Angel. Oh, Frank. Yeah, there, Angel. Take it easy. We, we don't have much time. Oh, but to have to talk to you like this through an iron screen, not even to be able to touch you. When That's I... the way it is, Angel, when a guy's been... Frank. Frank, I know you didn't do it. I know you didn't. Of course I didn't, Angel, but just one of those things, circumstantial evidence. Oh, but there must be something. Uh -uh. I was pretty optimistic during the trial because I knew I didn't do it, I guess, but now that I look back on it, they had enough coincidence pieced together to convict a dozen innocent men. Frank. Oh, Frank, how can you be so calm? How can you... There's one thing I want you to know. I want to be sure you didn't believe any of that gossip about my running around with her. Oh, of course she I did She was didn't. a star. I was a producer. I needed her for my next picture. Lorna Moore was a big name in pictures, but you knew I'd been seeing her. I even told you how I'd quarreled with her. Oh, Frank, Frank, I know. Frank, how much more time is there? Two or three more minutes. No, 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 I mean... Oh, November the 16th. Six weeks. Yeah. Frank, I'm going to do something. What can you do, Angel? Don't you realize there's a murderer running around loose? Some man who's free and having fun and going out with girls. I'm going to find them. How could you find them? The police tried for weeks. They didn't try. All they wanted was to convict you. Uh-uh. But it is nice to hear you say it, Angel, because... What? Because it makes me know you really did love me. Oh, Frank. You see, there are things you can face when you're like this you, you didn't dare talk about or even think about before. <laughs> I always loved you, Eve, I, but you were so much younger and, and full of ambition. Oh, Frank, don't. I'm sorry, Angel. I wish I could have done things for you. There won't be much left for you now. You know how it is in this business. You spend it as fast Frank, as you make it. stop. Please, please stop. Oh, I'm a heel. Forgive me, Angel. But it's wonderful to know how you do feel. Frank, Frank, I'm not going to let this thing happen. There must be something. There must be some clue somewhere. Well, don't you think the police... Something the police didn't know. Something you saw when you were up there and, and didn't tell them. I couldn't have very well told them anything about that when my whole defense was that I hadn't been up there. But there wasn't anything, nothing important. Oh, but there must have been something. Whoever, whoever was there before you, wh whoever did it, must have left some trace. Well, there was her address book. Her, her... Yeah, uh, I stuck it in my pocket because, well, it, it was open at the letter J and my name was in it. It was a silly thing to do, but it's in the little secret drawer in my oh, desk. Oh, Frank, why didn't you tell somebody sooner? What was the use? If I told him I'd been up there... Oh, yes. Yeah. There, there, there was another little thing. I, I hadn't thought. Frank, a what, smell. What, a, a what? What? What kind Cigar of? Cigar smoke. Your time's up, Miss Jeremy. Frank, all right, all right, every day. All right, Miss Jeremy. Goodbye. So long, Angel. October fifth. Frank, darling, I found the little address book where you said it was. It's not much to go on. There are hundreds of names. But under the J's, there are only three others besides yours. I'm going after them one at a time. Tomorrow, I'm going down to see Lieutenant Trout of the Homicide Bureau. He always seemed to me one of the few who tried to be fair. And I might need help. Oh, darling, I know it isn't much, but you must keep on hoping. Something will happen, if only because I love you so desperately. <laughs> What's your angle, Mrs. Jeremy? M my angle? Yeah. Why are you doing all this? But, but he's my husband. I love oh, him. Oh, look, Mrs. Jeremy, the cops around this town aren't exactly dummies, you know. We know what you were like before you married All him. right, Dick Tracy. A person can change, can't they? Mm, sure they can. A cop just hates to have anyone think they can make a sucker out of him. You know how it is. Well, you can skip the apologies if that's where they're supposed to be. Sure. Now, what do you want me to do? Well... What kind of evidence would I have to have? How specific would what, it have... to, uh, upset a first-degree murder rap? Well, something in writing. That's not so easy. Have you got a suspect in mind? Some particular person? No, not yet. But you might have. 
Well, there's one other thing. It's an old, old trick, but it's still good. What's that? Uh, did you ever see one of these things? No, I don't think so. Here, talk into this little gadget here. Well, what, what'll I say? Oh, anything. Just talk. Lieutenant Trout is one of the most chivalrous gentlemen I've ever met. <laughs> You're quite a realist, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, now listen. Lieutenant Trout is one of the most chivalrous gentlemen I've ever met. See? A, a dictaphone. Yeah, think it might come in handy? Well, it, it might. October 7th. Darling, Trout has installed a dictaphone in my new apartment. It's only a room, really. And, of course, I've changed my name to Evelyn Jarvis and my appearance. I don't think that even you, my darling, would recognize me now. The phone numbers are a dead end so far. The first was a dressmaker and the next a man who's definitely been in the South Pacific for over a year. But there's one more, a Jerry Jordan. I'm going to call him this afternoon. Oh, my darling, I miss you. I miss you so terribly. Hello? Oh, uh, is this Mr. Jerry Jordan? Yes. <laughs> well, I finally found you. Can you guess who this is? Well, I'm afraid I'm not very good at that. Oh, all right. I suppose I'll have to tell you. This is uh, Evelyn Jarvis. Oh? Well, don't you know who I am? No, I'm sorry, I don't, Miss Jarvis. Well, this is embarrassing. Didn't you get the letter? No, what letter? Oh, my goodness. Well, you see, a, a very good friend of yours, who's also a very good friend of mine, wrote you a letter about me. Or at least he said he would. I see. And I'll give you one other clue. I'm, uh... I'm from out of town. Now, can you guess? You wouldn't be from San Francisco, would you? Well... Uh... <laughs> Ed Thornton, eh? <laughs> he always did have a terrible memory for anything but phone numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't mean to bother you, but Ed said to be sure and look you up. Well, uh, where are you staying? Oh, I managed to find a little place. Well, lucky you. Uh, have you got any plans for dinner? Why, uh... Well, I, I hadn't really thought... Say, better still, have you got any plans for right now? <laughs> well, really, Mr. No, Jordan. no, seriously. By the time we've had a drink and gotten acquainted, you'll be ready for dinner anyway. Oh, no, no, Ah, I... now you wouldn't want Ed Thornton to know you were acting that way, would you? You just jump in a taxi and tell him to take you to the Brown Derby on Vine Street. I'll be waiting right there. Uh, well... And, I... uh, knowing Ed the way I do, I... I'm dying to meet you. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, from what I know, I'm sort of anxious to meet you. <laughs> Darling, just a quick P.S. I'm going to meet him now at the Brown Derby. Mr. Jerry Jordan. And I have a hunch he's it. I don't know why. I'll remember what you said about cigar smoke. And yet, although I've got a hunch, it, it makes me feel a little shaky to be going there. He's... Well, he's got such a nice voice to be a murderer. <laughs> so that's what he says about me, huh? As a fine pal. <laughs> I'll say one thing for Ed. He may be an awful liar, but he sure has swell taste. Well, which proves he's no liar. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, Jerry, is this the Brown Derby? I, I mean, the one you hear about? Ah, uh, this is it. Well, are there any people, you know, famous people here now? Well, it's a little early, but... Oh, <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've always thought it was awfully silly, really, to be impressed by movie stars. Still, Hollywood must be sort of an exciting town to live in. I, hmm? I'm... I mean, from some of the things I hear that, that oh, go oh, on. <laughs> that's mostly newspaper talk. Hollywood's just like any other town. They have their regular quota of divorces and fistfights. Oh, and, and, and murders. Oh. You mean that Lorna Moore business? <laughs> well, I, I read something about it. Yes, that, uh, that was a genuine tragedy, all right. 
I don't... I don't suppose you knew her. Well, as a matter of fact, Lorna was one of the few celebrities I did know. Oh, really? What was she like? Well, Lorna was a long ways from being the sweet little thing she seemed to be on the screen. Oh, but murder was... Would... Yes, I suppose nothing really excuses that. Well, anyway, they, they got the man who did it. Frank Jeremy? Yes, I guess they did. You mean you don't think that... They... Oh, the case looked good enough. You can't always tell about those things, though. Any number of people might have done it. I, I'm afraid little Lorna's life was kind of a mess. Well, Jerry, were you... Mixed up with Lorna? <laughs> no, oh, no. But, but didn't the police... I, I mean, I should think with a woman like that, all of her friends... They nabbed Jeremy so quick, they didn't even question anyone else. Anyway, I was out of town when it happened. Oh. Uh, Jerry, may I have a cigarette? I'm sorry. I, I don't use them. I'll get you some, however. I only smoke cigars. I... What, what did you what did you say? I said, I only smoke cigars. Darling, don't you see? His name in her book, and he admits he knew her in the cigars. I'm positive. Now if I can win his confidence, get him up to my apartment near that dictaphone. Oh, I know I can do it. We've still got four weeks, darling, and... And I'll have to be awfully careful. He's clever and, and intelligent. Imagine a man who can carry a thing like that on his conscience and and still be so so terribly nice and, and courteous and, and thoughtful. But I'm going to win for you, darling. Hello, Jerry. Hello. You've been waiting long? Not very. Jerry, is something the matter? I don't know, darling. Look, why do we always have to meet here? Why can't I pick you up at your place? I don't even know where it is. Sometimes it's almost as though you were, well, keeping some sort of a secret from me. Oh, isn't it a woman's privilege to have secrets? Don't talk like that, darling. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, you, you must know by now I, I couldn't have any secrets from you. <laughs> oh, I'm a fine one to talk, I guess. The fact is I've been holding out on you, darling. I don't live in that hotel. I live in a place out in Beverly Hills with about 30 rooms and a swimming pool a block long. I've got more money than I know what to do with. Oh? Oh, darling, I... I feel like a dog about it now, but I... I didn't want you to know at first. Oh, and till you were sure I didn't care about money. Is that it? Yes, dear. Try to forgive me, will you? <laughs> oh, my poor darling. Will you? Of course I will. I do. And... And Jerry... Yes? About those secrets of mine. Suppose there were some things I couldn't tell you yet. Would that matter? Not if I was sure you would tell me someday. Jerry, I promise you that someday I will tell you. Frank, darling... I know the delay must be torture to you, but you must understand how careful I've got to be. I've got to have the positive, living truth on that dictaphone. I haven't been able to get him up here yet, but we've still got ten days, and I have a feeling it's going to be soon. Very soon. So don't worry, darling. I miss you. Who is it? Sorry, Jerry. Oh, w wait a minute. Jerry. Darling, I had to. It, it's been almost a week, and I... Well, how did you find this place? What do you think I didn't tell you where it was if I didn't have reason? Let me in, please. I've got to talk to you. I... All right. Darling, Ed Thornton arrived in town last night. Oh. He came to see me. Oh? He's never heard of you. He doesn't know anybody by the name of Evelyn Jarvis, or anyone that even looks like you. Is that what you came up here to tell me? Darling, darling, I don't care what it is. Only please, please. Jerry. Jerry. Oh, darling. I want you so much. Oh, Jerry. Jerry, my darling. I want you to go away with me tonight. I want you to marry me. You... You what? I want you to marry me. But first... Oh, my darling, I've waited so long. There's something... Something I've got to tell you. No, Jerry. No, Jerry, don't. I've got to... And then you can tell me whatever it is 
and we can start even. If you still want to. Jerry, do we of us have to tell anything? Does that matter now? I got to, Evelyn. I, I can't keep it any longer. Not the way I feel about about you. Jerry. I've I've killed someone. I'm a murderer. Who? Lorna Moore. And another man is going to die for it. <laughs> Jerry. Oh no, my Jerry. Listen to me. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you've done. Jerry, I love you. You know that I love you. Can you still? I've loved you from the beginning. It didn't matter then and it doesn't matter now. Darling, how do you mean it didn't matter then? Did you? Yes, I knew. You know who I am? Who? I'm Eve Jeremy, the wife of the man who's going to die for it. His wife. Yes. Now you know. And you're willing to let him die? Oh, he deserves to die for the things he's done. He'd have probably killed her anyway I if you knew hadn't. He was seeing her. He was a beast, Jerry. I knew from the beginning it was a mistake. He beat me. He beat me and he tortured me. I, I can't even tell you some of the things he. When. When does it happen? The 16th. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Does that matter? You. I'd let 50 men die to get you, darling. That's why I haven't seen you. That's why I haven't seen you. I was waiting until... We could be in Argentina tomorrow night. I'll pass. I can get plane tickets tonight from a friend. I don't have to change, do I? Oh, you look lovely. I'll, I'll just throw a couple of things in a bag. Nobody will know about this place anyway. Make it quick, though. And it's a perfectly logical time for me to go away for a while. Hurry, baby, hurry. I'm all ready now. How do I look? Oh, you look beautiful, darling. Oh, wait. What? Oh, I ought to write a note to him. Your husband? Yes. Just to keep us both in the clear. He won't get it until just before... What are you going to say? Well, you can read it if you want to. No, no. Here, I'll mail it for you. No, I'll just stick it in my handbag. I'll mail it at the airport. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, Jerry. Well, good evening, Mrs. Jeremy. Uh, oh, Hello. You, uh, taking a little trip? Wouldn't you, if you were me? Sure, I know how you feel. You, uh, in a hurry? Sort of. My, my friend here was going to run me down to the airport. Lieutenant Trout, Mr. Jordan. Well, I won't keep you but a minute, and then I'll give you a fast trip down there in a squad car. Want to step inside a minute? All right. Your, uh, friend here know what you've been doing? In, in a way. Mm. Any luck with our little gadget? What little gadget? Oh, a, a, a dictaphone. Lieutenant Trout thought... Oh, you thought, Mrs. Jeremy. All right. I thought. Mind if I turn it on? No, go ahead. There's nothing... I've got to, Evelyn. <gasps> hmm. oh. I can't keep it any longer. Not the way I feel now about you. Jerry, don't I... I've killed someone. I'm a murderer. Who? Lorna Moore. And another man is going to die for it. <laughs> well, I guess that's about all we need to know, isn't it? I guess it is. Well, I told you I'd get him, didn't I? Yeah. Evelyn. You can wrap him up and take him away, Lieutenant. And don't forget to send me back my husband the first thing in the morning. Come on, Jordan. Eve. So long, Sucker. Eve. <laughs> they sure gave you the right name, baby. Yeah. Only you wouldn't have needed the apple. Or the snake. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't seem possible. Back here in our own home, out here on our own terrace again, everything just the way it was. Yeah. Do you remember, do you remember when we first took the place, how happy we were, and, and how the agent took us out on this terrace and asked us if it would be <laughs> too high up, if we were afraid of high places? Mm-hmm. Frank, is something bothering you? Well, Eve... Oh, tell me, darling. Oh, I know you've been through so much. 
Well, when I think that today you might have... Now, look, Angel, I haven't any kick coming. You, you saved my life. Oh, darling. And I know what the answer is anyway, but it would only prey on my mind if I didn't talk to you about it. And there shouldn't be anything like that between us ever, should there? Well, of course not, darling. What is it? I... I have a record here. What record? That the police took off your dictaphone. Oh, well, Frank, I... want to play I... it back for you, Angel. I'll put it on the phonograph here oh, but, on the terrace. Oh, but Frank, please, dear, All I... right, Angel, I know. <laughs> Jared. Oh, my Jared, listen to me. It doesn't matter. I don't care what you've done. Jerry, I love you. Do you know that? I love you. Can you still? I've loved you from the beginning. It didn't matter then, and it doesn't matter now. Darling, what do you mean, it didn't matter then? Did you... Yes, I knew. You know who I am? Who? I'm Eve Jeremy, the wife of the man who's going to die for it. His wife? Yes. Now you know. And you're... Is... Is that all? That was the end of the record. That was all that was recorded. Oh, it's all Frank. right, Angel. It's all right. I, I know. Oh, Frank. Don't you see I had to play it that way? Don't you see I had to make him think that's so I could save you? Sure, I know, Angel. I just wanted to hear you say it, I guess. Please, Angel, I understand. Do, do, do you really? Why, of course I do. I'm a heel, Angel. Oh, darling. Listen, it's all over now. I'll tell you... Let's celebrate. All right. Let's. I'll go down and get us some wine, champagne or something. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I'll go now, only... <laughs> what, darling? Well, just getting out of the clink, I don't have any money. Do you? Oh, of course, darling. Right there in my handbag. Where? Oh. Oh, sure. Sure, you've got plenty. Say, here's a letter. A, a letter? Yeah, and it's addressed to me. A letter? A, a, a letter? Oh, Frank. Well, you must Frank, have forgotten don't. to... Frank. No, Frank. No, no Frank, no. No, Frank, I, I didn't. I, I, I can explain just how, Frank. Uh, please, Frank. Angel! Trout, Trout, this is Frank Jeremy. A terrible thing has just happened. What? My wife. Suicide. Nerves, I guess. She jumped off the terrace before I could stop her. It's 14 stories. Was suicide, was it? She gave me a note in her own handwriting just before. Oh. Well, of course, if the note says so. It does, all right. Hmm. Well, the case is closed. Here, I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, Frank, my darling, I've been wrong all the time. I've failed you utterly. Now I can't even bear the thought of facing you. When you read this, I will be gone. This is farewell forever. Signed, Eve. And so closes Eve, starring Nancy Kelly. Tonight's study in Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. And now, further to intrigue you, we of Suspense present a special preview of our next exciting tale. And here it is, a tantalizing glimpse of our next adventure in Suspense. Warden Gray. Yes, Miss Rhodes. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. I hate to disturb you like this, but I've traveled clear across the country. They wouldn't give me the information over the phone. I know. You know what this visit is all about, Warden. To some extent, yes. You think one of our prisoners, Tom Nixon, has escaped. He has escaped. I'm as sure of it as, as I'm sure of sitting here now. I saw him at large in New York City two days ago. You knew Tom Nixon well, Miss Rhodes? Knew him? Well, he was my mother's murderer. My mother was Mrs. George Rhodes of Huntington, Long Island. She ran a boarding house there. He killed her on September 18th, 1933. We have all the records of the crime, Miss Rhodes. Tom was mother's chief boarder for ten years. <sighs> know him. 
why I sat opposite him at dinner table from the time I was a girl of 15. I knew him as well as I knew Mother. I'd, I'd know him anyway. I see. And now he's at large. He's free. Somehow or other, he's, he's escaped this place. Maybe you're not aware of it. Maybe even his fellow prisoners aren't aware of it. But he's wormed his way out. And he's after me. He's after oh, me. Oh, now, my dear young lady. Warden Graves. Ten years ago, when Mother was found murdered, I knew it couldn't have been anyone but Tom. I testified against him. I was the chief, practically the only witness at the trial. And when they sentenced him here for life, he swore to kill me. He swore in the open court to get even with me. For ten years, I've lived in deadly fear. I've watched the newspapers for prison breaks. I've moved from house to house, made few friends. He's hung over me like a shadow. Even though I told myself he was locked up here, locked up here forever. And now it, it's come. And where exactly did you see the prisoner, Miss Rose? That's just the point. That's why I know he's after me. I saw him in my own apartment house. Well. He has a job there, running the elevator at night. That's what makes it so horrible. I've never married Warden Graves. I live all alone in a small three-room penthouse on the 18th floor of an office building. The other night, about a week ago, I came home alone from the movies after midnight. The big marble lobby of my building was deserted, except in a far corner near the elevator with his back toward me. There was a man down on his hands and knees, scrubbing the floor. Good evening. Good evening. Well, where is everybody? Isn't the elevator working tonight? You want to go up in the elevator, Mum? Certainly. I'll be right with you. Okay, Mum. What floor? I was in the elevator. And he had started to ascend before I really saw him. It was Tom. His hair had turned white, and there was a horrible stoop to his shoulders. But everything about him, the crook of his head, his high, thin, bony nose, the hollow cheekbones, were all the same. And then he turned and stared at me. I could see those deadly, pale, cold eyes, those heavy eyebrows, still black, that familiar, quiet, dark, mouth. What floor, Mum? Oh, oh, my floor. Uh, yes, the penthouse, please. Penthouse? Where's that, on the roof? Yes, on the roof, please. 18th floor. Okay. Warden Graves. It was being like, it was like being in a cage with a wild beast. He kept watching me, peering at me furtively as the elevator moved with agonizing slowness up and up past the floor. I shrunk back, averting my face. The light in the car was dim. My only hope was that he did not recognize me. Here's your floor, miss. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. You can go back down. I, I don't need anything, thank you. What's the matter? Forgotten your door key? No, no, it's just, it's right in my bag. I'll find it in a minute. You want me to let you in? Let me in? No, no, good Lord. I got pass keys to all the doors. No trouble. No, thanks, but I... No, 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 I, I have it right here. Good night. And so until our next performance, when you will hear the rest of this exciting tale, we keep you in suspense.
This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.